Welcome to this Room Club online education module on moisture associated skin damage or MASD, which forms part of a series of modules you can access online to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound management and skin care. Today, we will be discussing moisture associated skin damage, which I'll be referring to as MASD for the duration of the session. Now, I am hoping that by the end of the module, you will be able to define and identify the different types of MASD, that you will be able to describe the characteristics of each type of MASD and discuss some of its treatment and management of each type. Moisture associated skin damage is an umbrella term for the four types of MASD. It is defined as the inflammation and erosion of the skin caused by prolonged, take note of the word prolonged, exposure to various sources of moisture. That includes urine or stool, perspiration, wound exudate, mucus or saliva. It is generally accepted that MASD consists of four distinct conditions, each having a slightly different etiology namely incontinence associated skin dermatitis, intertriginous dermatitis, peri wound moisture associated dermatitis, peristomal irritant contact dermatitis. Now it is important that you distinguish between the four conditions to ensure appropriate prevention and management. The first type of MASD I would like to discuss with you today is incontinence associated dermatitis or I will be referring to as IAD for the duration of the session. IAD is defined as an erythema, an inflammation of the skin caused by prolonged contact with the skin to urine and feces. It typically presents, as I mentioned earlier, as an inflammation of the skin surface. Now, these are characterized by redness and in some cases, swelling and blister formation. Let us now look at some specific characteristics of IAD. Normally, IAD appears as a diffuse area of erythema, scaling of the skin. Blister formation may also occur and it may present as an open with weeping skin damage. These ulcers are typically shallow or superficial, that the edges are irregular, diffuse, and you may also observe maceration or whitening of the skin. They are commonly found on the perineum, skin folds between the buttocks and down the inner thighs. Now in your process of assessment, your patient may also report burning, itching, and pain from the affected areas. For the treatment and prevention of IAD, the following precautions can help reduce the risk. For example, minimize skin exposure to urine and stool, manage incontinence well, and for persistent cases, catheter or fecal containment devices may be needed and also ensure pads and continent products are changed promptly when indicated. You may also want to develop a consistent regime of skin care to protect the barrier function of the skin, including cleansing, moisturizing, and the use of skin protectant. You must also avoid frequent cleansing with soap and water, as this is detrimental to the skin barrier function. A cleanser with a pH range similar to that of a normal skin is preferred. You can also apply skin barrier creams and reduce friction forces to protect the skin from further damage. But please ensure that all patients with urinary or fecal incontinence should have their skin assessed at least once daily, depending on the number of incontinent episodes. Before I proceed to the next type of MASD, it is important to highlight the importance of differentiating between IAD and pressure ulcers. This will be beneficial for your patient and for your healthcare organization. It is essential that you assess accurately 
the cause of skin damage to allow correct diagnosis and treatment. Now, for example, to prevent pressure ulcers, the most important factor is to reduce or relieve pressure. And to prevent moisture damage, the most important factor is keeping the skin clean, dry and well hydrated. I am sure you will agree with me when I say that both are very different management options. Let us now look at the second type of MASD, named intertriginous dermatitis. Now, I don't know about you, but I find this quite challenging to pronounce. Luckily, it is also known as intertrigo, and I will be using this terminology for the duration of the presentation. Now, intertrigo is defined as an inflammatory condition occurring in skin folds, induced or aggravated by heat, moisture, maceration, friction and lack of air circulation. This is frequently complicated by infection, most commonly with yeast, candida, other bacterial, viral or other fungal infection may also occur. Obese people are more at risk of intertrigo due to excessive skin folds, increased perspiration to regulate their body temperature. Intertrigo can be found on axilla, inguinal skin fold and under breast. You may also find this type of skin damage in between legs or buttocks, under arms and between toes. They can appear like macerated outer layer of the skin and can progress to skin breakdown. In severe cases, you may observe oozing, exudation and may have secondary infection. Now, let us now move to the treatment and prevention of intertrigo. And you must consider the following. Examine the entire area of skin fold by gently lifting the folds. Ensure ongoing drying of the skin fold and protect the affected area or areas with a cream to prevent further breakdown. You must avoid products containing chlorhexidine, gluconate, alcohol or perfumes as these can be absorbed by the damaged skin. It is important to complete an assessment and care plan and you must not forget to include your patients in the decisions about their treatment. The third type of MASD to discuss is peri-wound moisture associated dermatitis. Now, I have seen this type of skin damage in my own clinical practice. Um, it is generally caused by a wound producing high volume of exudate, causing overhydration of the skin, leading into maceration. It is also worth knowing that wound exudate contains proteolytic enzymes. With exudate from chronic wounds having a much higher level of these enzymes and its contact with peri-wound skin can damage the skin and may even cause wound expansion. Another factor may affect the occurrence of this type of skin damage is an aggressive removal of adhesive wound dressings causing skin stripping. Therefore, I advise you to take extra care when removing wound dressings with strong adhesives. When you are assessing this type of skin damage, you will be looking for the following characteristics. Erythema and inflammation of the skin within, take note, four centimeter of the wound edges. This may also appear as a white macerated areas with little or no inflammation and erythema. The following precautions can help minimize the risk of developing peri-wound moisture associated dermatitis. Increase frequency of dressing changes. Review your current dressings for absorbency. Avoid aggressive dressing removal. You may want to consider using medical adhesive remover when changing dressings with strong adhesives. Protect the peri-wound area with a barrier agent. And you must remember to complete a regular wound assessment. So, the last type of MASD that is left for us to discuss is peristomal irritant contact dermatitis. This type of MASD can happen as a result of a poor seal around the stoma, 
or a pouch, allowing stool or urine to collect under the device, causing detrimental damage to the skin. A few of the common characteristics you will observe when assessing patient with this type of skin damage are once again inflammation, erythema and erosion of the skin at the stoma junction and this can extend out in a 4 inches or 10 centimeter radius. So I hope you wrote that down. Treating and preventing peristomal moisture associated dermatitis will involve the following. Ensure proper pouch adhesion. Make sure the pouch is not left in place for too long. This is because a longer wear times may lead to compromised pouch adhesion. When you are cutting the skin barrier to fit the stoma, it is recommended to do this frequently, particularly for the first six weeks. Protect the peristoma area with a barrier film and you must remember to complete an assessment and a care plan. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the following questions. Well done! We are now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you've learned today and apply it into your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some of the patients in your care and um, reflect on their skin care and how you might manage this going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link on the description below to access a copy of the revalidation form, which allows for a deeper reflection. Adding this reflection will mean that you will be able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you.